there. So second down and 12 for the Tigers. We still have room to get a first down. Bowden under pressure, nobody blocked and fires it into the end zone, and it's a touchdown. A great job by Bowden, Isaiah Gray, number 85, hauls it in for the touchdown for the Tigers. I think what you just saw right there was Bowden, amazing arm strength right there. He was able to cock that, pull that ball just so fast, pull the trigger. Isaiah Gray, the 6'3", 230-pound sophomore from Jonesboro, Louisiana, and what a play by the freshman quarterback. Yeah, and he had pressure in his face. He had two guys coming in his face, and he's still able to turn his body and deliver the ball. Just like that, the Tigers have cut the lead in half, but you got to give all the play on that one to Noah Bowden. He made that play. He had the pressure right in his face. He reacted immediately and knew where his people were on the field and completed the touchdown pass to Gray. Yeah, there's so many things happening here as you, as you, as you look it over, right? He, he's opening and turning. He's got to move his feet while he's looking to find his target all at the same time and then cock that you arm and be able to know, throw it, deliver it, a catchable ball, and he did a great job. Well, the Bulldogs have had a lot of success with the pressure and the blitzing and putting the heat on the young quarterback, and but that time they got burned. And again, you know, I, I talked about it several times. You got to go to the middle. You've got to find some space in that middle. It's been there, and all their passes have been wide outside the numbers, and that's one of the first times they've actually come inside in that seam. And you can see he was wide open. There was about two or three yards from the side of Gray as he just went right down the seam. So that's something they they finally explored now. Now you got a seven point game again, 758 in the second quarter. Well, I think, and also we saw an example, as you see Gray on the sidelines, we saw an example of what Coach Fobbs was talking about when he talked about the football sense and his intelligence on the field for Bowden, that he reads things and he picks up things and he saw the blitz, he saw where the blitz was coming from and he knew which receiver would be open on the ground. So Garrett Urban to kick it off. 14-7. Tigers have closed it within seven. And this ball is live, and it's loose, and the Tigers say they have it. And let's see what the officials say as they try to unstack, but a great job on downfield coverage by the Grambling Tigers. What an amazing play, Butch. <laughs> you know, these floaters all the time, a lot of these times they don't do what you're intended to do, right? A lot of times you try to float one so there's not a great return, and you almost give the other team great field position just on the kick. This one floated, and the Bulldogs didn't attack the ball and try to get to it, and <laughs> the best move was jumping up and popping that ball forward. I, I think it was Ray Estes who came up with the football for the Tigers. Let's take another look. You see, right there, it was touched by an offensive player, and then the ball is loose, and then it's a mad scramble for it. Estes with the tip and the recovery. If you watch, he jumps up, and he's able to bat that ball. Again, once it passes 10, he's able to touch it. So Estes with the bat and the recovery there. Absolutely fantastic play. What a great play by the Grambling Tigers, and they are knocking at the door again. Noah Bowden, the young quarterback, hands it inside to Bruton. He picks up some short yardage inside before he is taken down, but good give right there. He read the defense, saw that they were bringing the pressure, handed it off inside. Yeah, the Tigers are successful really when they have the quick hitters inside, right? Because Bruton can certainly make something happen. When they just give him the ball quick, I feel like they don't let the Bulldogs' pursuit get to him as quick, right? He's able to, to cut. Whenever they do the slower moving plays, the Bulldogs have a lot more pressure on them. Second and eight for the Tigers. Bowden fakes the pass, has pressure again, and this time he's going to eat the football. I mean, he took, he thought better of just throwing that ball up for grabs, so he took it down and he kept it. But a lot of heat by Alabama AM, and he is sacked. Well, Bruton tried to pick up a block, but he can't block three, right? So, so. Well, the Bulldogs just sent so many off that same side, and Bruton was picking up one. There was two right behind him, and, and there was just nowhere for Bowden to go with a ball. Watch this. There's Bruton trying to pick up one. There's one, two, three, four, all having a party on the quarterback. Jabron McNeil, one of the Bulldogs in the backfield, but really the young quarterback never really had a chance on that one. I mean, that was just, you talk about overloading a side and bringing everybody, and that's what we saw right there. So 
now it's a third down for the Grambling Tigers. And we have a whistle on the field. There's a timeout Grambling on the play, so the Tigers will come over to the sideline and get some instruction. Yeah, you know, they've called, what, this is their third timeout, I think, already in this game. And, and, and each time they've come out of a timeout, they've had a good result in the play. I believe they had a sack the one time, and they had a, you know, a, a good play down here on, on a, a scoring opportunity, right, before that scoring drive. And then now they're doing it again. So whatever they're doing during their timeouts, they're very effective uh, throughout. Now, I, what I'd like to see, because it's the third and, you know, what, a mile, <laughs> I'd like to see them just go in that end zone. Give a crack at the end zone, and then if you can't get it, then you go ahead and you hit the field goal when it's third down. And again, you, can, you got a real wide side. You got plenty of room on that wild side, wide side. The 27th meeting between the two schools, and here's the thing that's odd about that. Grambling leads the series 20 to 6. That's not odd. Grambling, though, has won the last four in a row wow. in this series, trying to make it five straight today, and here they are with a big third down coming up. Bowden with protection this time. Fires it into the end zone. It's a little short and a great job by the receiver to break that up. I think it was Kobe Ross who came back, and you got to give him a lot of credit there because that was almost picked off in the end zone. Yeah, it should have been picked off, and you're right. Ross did a great job of hitting the defender to make sure he couldn't catch the ball, and the defender is hurt as well. Jamarian Green was back there defending on the play. Yeah, he was going left all the whole time. He looked at that receiver the entire time. And Jamarian Green, look. He goes up trying to grab that ball, and oh, great defensive play by your receiver. Wow, Kobe Ross might have had a step on that play. So that will bring on Garrett Urban for the field goal attempt from right at 39 yards. His kick is up, and it is good. Good kick by Garrett Urban, and just like that, the Tigers put three more on the board. And with 6.14 to go in the second quarter, it is 14 to 10. Alabama A&M leading the Grambling Tigers. Welcome back, everyone. Let's check out our impact players brought to you by Cricket, the impact players for the Grambling Tigers. Noah Bowden, we've seen him. He, he did a great job on that touchdown drive just a few minutes ago. And then how about Blake Thomas and then the wide receiver, Greg White, who has a couple of catches in this one. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'm going to start with Blake Thomas just for the fact that their defense has made enough plays, right, and big plays to be able to keep them in this game, right? And, and given Bowden the time and the offense to, to, to settle down into this game and now you've got a 14-7 game and again you can't got to talk about the special teams play as well though that special teams play gave him that extra 
three points, if you will, and put them in good shape. So the kick from Garrett Urban. Urban goes down to Hilaire. Hilaire has a little lane. He's going to have a big pickup, but we do have a flag thrown in behind the play, which usually means they're going to bring it back, that someone had a block they shouldn't have had. But it was a nice return by Hilaire, and we will see what the officials have to say about it. Rory Bernard is our referee for today. an illegal block done by the Bulldogs and that'll push it back with we, as we take another look at the replay yeah it was that I don't know if he got a piece of him but it was an attempted block behind the back there uh, below the legs there I think was kind of yeah going for it. he did dive at his legs from behind but you know you mentioned it a, a little while ago the Grambling defense has really been doing an excellent job of course the defensive coordinator Eric Everett Todd He's had those guys ready all year, and they came into this ball game ready again. This time, the handoff to Quarles inside, and, and not much going on there. Brendan Vaughn, the young man who got the interception, was there to quickly make the stop. Yeah, it, you know, in a game like this, too, from the numbers standpoint, the Bulldogs are dominating as far as total offense, et cetera, but you get enough big plays, and what's happening, the Tigers are getting more and more confidence as this game gets going on. Glass looking to throw under a lot of pressure, lofts another one up, and it's intercepted again by the Tigers. Second pick of the day, Quincy Mitchell, this time picking it up in the secondary, and it was the pressure applied to Glass that led to his second turnover here in the first half. Glass goes in today, just two, touch, two, two, two interceptions on the season, and now two today alone. And again, the pressure made that happen. He could not step into the pass, and he floated it up there. Whenever you do that, it is dangerous. And the Tigers' defense, again, comes up with a play, and they put the Tigers' offense in great, great position. Now, if you're the Tigers, you need to get seven here. You need to get seven. You can't just settle for three. Quincy Mitchell, the 6'1", 190-pounder, the sophomore from Baton Rouge, coming up with a huge play with 5.29 to go here in the second quarter. And the Tigers have excellent field position with the ball resting at the 15. A man in motion to the left. Bowden fires for the end zone. Wide open for the touchdown is his big, big tight end there. That's number 80, Darrell James. And he hauls it in. And the Grambling Tigers are out in front in this ball game. That's that sudden change you talk about, right? Enough mistakes. You keep handing someone mistakes and opportunities. People will deliver, and I love the play call here. Let your quarterback fling one out. The defender falls. He's wide open. And again, your quarterback relaxes. Make sure he throws the ball nice and neat. Sometimes somebody's too wide open, and you throw a, a missed, missed ball there. But nice job, and they capitalize with seven. Maceo Thornhill was the defensive back that fell down and left the receiver all by himself. So Garrett Urban comes on. His extra point attempt is good. And just like that, the Grambling Tigers have turned two turnovers into some big-time points here. Yeah, I mean, and again, if you're, if you're the Bulldogs, you're also looking in the mirror saying, what the heck are we doing here? We, we were playing a quarter and a half of really some great football. Missed a couple of opportunities. Should have had more points. And then wait a minute. Now we're down 17 to 14 because of our own mental errors and mistakes. And we're just not executing. So it'll be interesting to see what the Bulldogs do now. I'm sure.
but you made enough stops, uh, and, and now you're in good position. And you're, you're leading this game. And so, again, what's the answer for Alabama a and Well, it's, it's a quill glass being calm and cool under the pressure. This guy's on everybody's watch list. You see him passing the football, throws it out to the outside. It's a completed pass, but when we talk about glass, you know, he's on the Walter Payton watch list. He's on the Reese's Senior Bowl watch list. He's been selected to play in the first ever HBCU Legacy Bowl. This guy can get it done. He's been in pressure situations before, and I'm sure Coach Connell Maynor is going to hand him the football and just let him do his thing going down the field. Second down and about four coming up for the Bulldogs. Glass under pressure is hit. The ball is loose. It's picked up by the Tigers, and the Grambling Tigers are taking it the other way. Cameron Richardson is in for Let's the touchdown. It was the pressure on Glass. They knocked the football Let's loose, go, and then big Cameron Richardson Inside right down game. the sideline rolls Let's in for go, a touchdown. Go, oh, big guy's dream, isn't it? Oh, my Let's gosh. I, 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 I am just baffled. Uh, Glass just trying to make you – know, I said a moment ago, you just got to take the plays that they give you and don't try to do too much. And I feel like Glass right there was just kept saying, no, I'm going to find a way to make a big play. And what happens the other way? <laughs> You've got Cameron Richardson coming in there, knocking the ball, picking it up, and then going the other way. And not only is it, what, a fumble six? <laughs> a pickup six? <laughs> well, this defense has dialed up some pressure here in the second quarter, and it has paid off in a big way. A defensive touchdown there as Garrett Urban. Up and in is his extra point. It is true. And just like that, it has been the turnovers that have actually turned this ball game around completely in Grambling's favor. Now they have a 10-point lead, 24-14. And you're right. You talked about the pressure. Now, but look, right here, that should have been enough time. But right there, he wants to get more, and he's like, I've got to make some more things happen. And, and when, he, when you do that, when you're trying to go outside of the play, you can make some great things happen at times, but otherwise, you can have that happen right there. Sundiata Anderson was the young man who knocked the football out of there, and big number 91, Cameron Richardson, was right there. And I tell you what, did not take that big fella long to scoop that thing up and get down the sideline. Well, my first instinct was fall on the ball, fall on the ball. You got lineman hands, don't do that, right? And then he picks it up, and he picked it up cleanly, and then he was just storming down that sideline. And there's nothing better than a touchdown for a defensive lineman. That is just, that is awesome. 4.38 to go here in the first half. So, uh, you know, if you're Alabama a and you, you're going to come back and you're going to say, hey, guys, let's tighten up and, and try to get this ship back on the right on the right track. This has always been my, my, my view. Is you call people together and say, look, stop looking at the scoreboard, right? Let's, let's run a drive. Forget it, right? Let's just run a clean drive and execute. If you're trying to go, oh, well, we got to catch this. We shouldn't have done this. We shouldn't have done that. You're, you're thinking of everything except for the now. And right now, the Bulldogs have to get into the right now on this drive. Urban's kick is deep. Into the end zone it goes, so the Bulldogs will come back out again and start fresh first and 10 from the 25-yard line, trailing 24-14. Yeah, and again, you know, one thing I would would like to see is them kind of Jig roll it class out just a little bit, maybe some kind of rolling pockets, get them a little bit on the outside, do something a little bit uh, with some movement for him. He's been, you know, right there uh, behind the line of scrimmage a lot. There's Connell Maynard right there getting his one to get the final word in before his team came back out on the field. You know, we had been seeing what we had been seeing one of the offensive assistants get yeah. in there and call the plays and fi fire the guys up and Connell goes oh no no I need to get in here right now I need to yeah. step in and uh, get my point across yeah I'll give you some coach translation knock it off <laughs> <laughs> let's get in there and play ball so the Bulldogs first and ten the pitch to Quarles has some blocking around the right side and Quar Quarles picks up about five yards there four yards on the carry and that'll settle things down, right? I, I, you know, we, we talked about uh, on the Tiger side, uh, Coach is going to, Coach Bob's going to that offensive line saying, look, you guys have got to help your quarterback. I think right now that's what he does, they do. They're on the sidelines. They say, look, linemen, let's control the line of scrimmage and we can do what we want to do. Second and five. Goes over here to Ibrahim. Ibrahim spins away from one guy and then finally dragged down. Someone had him by the, that is Fontenot. 
Keenan Fontenot, who had him by the shoelaces there and managed to drag him down after a nice game. But Abraham again, right, getting touched, getting another three, four yards. He's always going to get you that extra. Let your playmakers do the job. For Glass, he's got to quit trying to make it happen all on his shoulders. He picked up the first down on that run. So Glass again goes back to Ibrahim, and look out, boy, he almost broke that one again. Lawrence Asiadu, Asiadu was the guy who made the tackle there. And, man, again, there was one foot away from him breaking that thing way down the field. Yeah, look at that. Right here. Ah, I got a little bit of that shoe, and, man, I'll tell you what, he contorted a little bit. I think Abraham went out to get a little uh, breath of fresh air on that one. Tigers come with the pressure, and a good job by Glass reading underneath and hitting the open man, Anderson. That's a great play by yeah. Glass, reading the pressure, seeing where he was coming from, and throwing to the empty spot. And again, they went to the inside a little bit. I think a lot of times, for whatever reason, quarterbacks get way too comfortable on that outside. They get very predictable, and they don't look to that secondary receiver in the, in the seam or in the center. And, and there's a lot there. You know, linebackers uh, can cover, but they, they're not... You know, they're linebackers. <laughs> and so you get a tight end or you get a receiver that can go in that middle. They can, they can create some drama there. First and 10 for the Bulldogs. Glass under pressure, rolls to his right, dumps it off, and it's going to be an incomplete pass. He was trying to hit Kendrick Johnson underneath. And up until that pass, Glass had gotten himself into a little rhythm. Yeah, but I think even in that, right, there's nothing wrong with throwing it at his feet and living for another day, right? Right there, he didn't try to do too much, but even then, you knew your tight end was getting ready to get killed. Sometimes just throw it at his feet and say, all right, that's like throwing the ball away. Let's run another play. And you need to get him in that mindset. Quit thinking we're going to win this game right here on this drive because you can't. You can't. You can only get seven. Second and ten for the Bulldogs. Glass to throw again, and he's behind his intended receiver that time. Yeah, Glass is good coverage a, inside. Yeah, Glass is usually a very accurate passer, so there's no doubt he's, he's either rattled a little bit or just his timing is a little bit off. And, and again, you mentioned he's got to settle down at this time. And again, I, I think some some runs they showed a little minute ago. They can move that ball. They can move that offensive line. Pass was intended for Ibrahim, so that'll set up third and ten for the Bulldogs. And the Tigers are coming. They're coming. Glass looks at the sidelines, maybe to change the play. Third down, he pitches to Quarles. Quarles has an open screen in front of him, but he closed down really quick. A good job by the Grambling Tigers. Ray Estes, number 24 there to shut that down because when he caught the pass, when he caught the pitch, it looked like he had some room to go. Yeah, and it was a unique play call, too, because he, he got it just in timing in between that uh, defender coming in between the pitch and the quarterback. And that pitch made it just past him. And you thought, oh, wait a minute. Maybe there's some real room here. And they're going to keep the offense out there. Go for a four, on fourth down. Fourth down. The Bulldogs are going to go for it as, Quarles, as Glass looks over to the sideline. Fourth and very short. Fourth and four coming up. But you got 153 to go in the half. And we have whistles on the field. And they blow it up before Glass can get the snap from center. And that may mean you had movement on offense. So the Bulldogs will take a timeout to talk about this play. So this is Connell Maynard rolling the dice here, saying, look, guys, we got to get this thing going. I want to get a score on this drive, and we can pick up this first down. Well, the interesting part of that, right, that, that's putting a lot of weight on your offense. An offense that started the game real confident, had some swagger going, lost focus, quite frankly, right? Lost focus, had a lot of mistakes. And this is him saying, look, we're going to ride you. I, I, my expectations are for you guys to pick. Fourth and four is nothing to sneeze at, right? It's not like a fourth and one. You've got plenty of options. It's fourth and four. It means you're going to put some pressure on your offense to, to create a play. And then right there, I like the timeout. Hey, guys, here's what we're trying to do. But the downside is to look at both sides of this coin here. It's, it's not, not a two-headed coin. So yeah. here's another <laughs> side to this thing. And is if you don't make it, Grambling has a minute and 50 seconds to maybe put some more points on the board. So this is a huge down in this ball game. Fourth and four to go for Alabama A&M. Yeah, and mind you, I mean, Alabama A&M led this game 14-0. Glass 
think they wanted to have a look at the defense. Saw what he wanted to see. Now the snap. Glass tries to flip it out to the outside, and it's not going to work. It's going to be an incomplete pass, and the ball will turn over to the Grambling Tigers. Brian so Powell. That play kind of blew up on the Bulldogs before they could execute. Yeah, Brian Powell, number 48. I think he was one of those guys that blew that up. Just didn't give him a chance. To, he couldn't even plant to make a turn there, right, because he knew that there were so many Tigers over there, and he led the way. Watch it. Again, there's that same play that this time he tried to pass it over. 48 was coming. And, and, and great job by the Tigers' defense again, stymieing the Bulldogs' offense. And now they're in business with a chance to do something before the half, extend their lead. And again, they've scored 24 unanswered points in this, in this second half, in the second quarter. 145 to go in the half, and the Tigers have pretty good field position, and Noah Bowden's going to go deep. Fires that has a man down there was Greg White, and he was just a little too strong on the pass. White actually had a couple of steps. Yeah, opportunity missed is exactly what happened there. I mean, he had an open receiver, just did not have the accuracy there. Uh, but, man, that, that was... Uh, that was certainly almost six points right there. And I like the play call. Love it. Watch. He is wide open there. You can see him in your screen at the beginning, and he just, just could not connect to him. Just a little too much on that pass. He, he, he did the right thing. He threw it out to where he could run underneath it. And uh, just a little too strong on the pass. So second down and 10 for the Tigers. Bruton on the handoff straight ahead. And that's going to set up third down after the good stop right there by the Bulldogs. Yeah, big number 77 from the Tigers offensive lineman there. So the Tigers go back to the huddle, and they're looking at a second down and long. There was actually a penalty on the first down possession that we didn't see at the time on the field. The official made the call. So that's going to bring up second and 11 now. Yeah, they're doing invisible flags today. Kind of sneakily just kind of doing a couple penalties on us. Well, the Grambling Tigers would like to keep this momentum going. I mean, with the amount of time left in the first half, I think at the very least, Coach Fobbs would love to have three more points put up on the board. Well, when, when you're playing... Alabama A&M, the top scoring team in the SWAC, right? They score 38, 36, 37 points a game. You know you have to keep scoring every time you catch the ball, right? So, so every point matters. You can't sit there and go, well, we got to lead right now, just 10. That's nothing. You already know That's them Bulldogs ain't point. about to be like this all game. You know that second and 11 this time, time for the Bulldogs. Tigers. Bruton has some room inside, and he's spinning away, but a big tackle by Troutland to shut that down. The transfer from Louisville was right there to plug the hole. He did a good job. He's one of the better tacklers on that Alabama a and defense. It's like a hammer. I mean, he spun him. And again, we've seen how Bruton can run, how hard he runs, and watch, boom. He was just starting to spin, and Trotman said, not today, my friend. Sit down. <laughs> so now we're looking at a third and long coming up now for the Tigers from Grambling. Bruton has got a lot of the action today in the backfield. The young freshman quarterback, Noah Bowden, started today for the Tigers and has done an exceptional job, but really has gotten into it in the second quarter. And he goes back to Bruton again. And Bruton, had he not stumbled, he may have picked up the first down for the Tigers. But he lost his footing, and he goes down as the clock continues to tick down here in the first half. We're down to 25 seconds and counting. Yeah, and for fans, if that's why you know, they were wondering why maybe they were letting so much time go off before they took that snap. And it was because if we don't make this first down, we're going to lose less time uh, on that clock. And, you know, I like the way the coach goes over to Bruton and says, look, man, we get what you were doing. You know, you, you, you trip. Hey, it's, it's all right, man. We're good. They won't even take a snap now. As the clock ticks down on the first half, and the Grambling Tigers will be going to the locker room with the lead. And they're very happy about that. There's no doubt about that. It's time. You know, Coach Bob has to feel really good about the way his team came on in the second quarter and really got things done. 24 unanswered points in that. And it took everyone, special teams, defenses, interceptions, and then execution by your offense to get things done. Great job by the Tigers.
come back and we'll see what the Bulldogs do for halftime to regroup and refocus. You see the Tigers walking back to the locker room and they got a little zip in their step there. They're up out in front 24-14. We'll be back in a minute with the halftime report, so stick around for that. If they show the band, I'll show it, but I doubt it. They don't never show the band love.
all the pageantry of college football on a Saturday afternoon. The GSU Tigers. Showed us a little bit of love. It showed us a little bit of love for a second. That's what's up. Showed us a little bit of love for a second. Alabama a and with that perfect 3-0 record overall. They're 1-0 in the SWAC. As you can see, Jackson State also 1-0 in conference play. But today, Alabama a and in some trouble. Yeah, they, they are in some trouble. And, and again, the focus is, is the big thing. They came out that first quarter, looked dominant, had 14 points, should have had more than that, right? Didn't didn't execute, started having some, some issues, and then that parlayed into some opportunities uh, for Grambling. And Grambling, to their credit, 
ca capitalized on each one of those, and next thing you know, they score 24 unanswered points now and lead this game. Okay, Alabama State also 1-0, but on the other side in the West, Prairie View, the big story there, they're 3-0 and in conference play, so you'd have to say the Panthers have a big advantage over everybody else. Mm -hmm. Alcorn and Southern are at 1-0. Uh, and Yeah, and I mean, you know, Prairie View is one of the teams here that actually had a lot of conference games early. Uh, and, and got their business going. And again, they took care of business, right? So Craven Adams in, is in good shape. Okay, let's check out the upcoming schedule by Pepsi Zero Sugar, brought to you by Pepsi Zero Sugar. As you can see, Grambling goes to Alcorn. That's on October 9th. Jackson State at Alabama A&M. That's a good one. Next week, you and I will do that one. Then it's Arkansas Pine Bluff at Alabama State. Excuse me, Jackson State and Alabama A&M. Then Pine Bluff versus Alabama State. Mississippi Valley at Bethune-Cookman on the 9th. Southern taking on the TSU Tigers. And then how about South Carolina State versus Florida A&M? Some good matchups. Yeah, some great matchups, and we're excited to be a part of that. All the SWAC lineup. Yeah, this, forward. this lineup presented by Pepsi Zero Sugar will be on ESPN, the family of networks. You can find it there. But for here, we're going to pause at the half, 24-14, Grambling leading Alabama in him.
acrobatics making the catch, and then that's where glass starts to get uh, shattered, shall we say? Yeah, Brandon <laughs> Vaughn with an interception, and that would set up Noah Bowden. What a great play by the freshman quarterback for the touchdown to Gray. And then watch this, another turnover as Reyes gets in to make the recovery for the Tigers, and they were in great field position. Garrett Urban came on, and he nailed the field goal to add three more to the Grambling tally. And then watch this, an ill-advised pass right there from Glass, picked off by Quincy Mitchell. And then the touchdown strike to follow. Just like that, the Tigers had another touchdown. And then again, great defense by Anderson. And that gives you an idea of just what went on as Cameron takes it all the way in for a touchdown. That's just a little look as we go to the second half kickoff with the Tigers out in front, 24-14. And here comes Grambling on the return. They will start first and 10 from the 26-yard line. So an exciting first half with some big, big plays and uh, Grambling. But you got to admit, their defense set the tone in the second quarter. They got some awesome defense that helped the Tigers build that lead. Yeah, even when, when the Alabama A&M was moving the ball really well, right, they still had some key moments. And really, I think it started with dialed up pressure, right? They started getting pressure up the middle. A lot of quarterbacks can do well when, when, when pressure comes off the side. They started getting that pressure right in Glass's grill, right? And when you can't see well, it's hard to throw a ball. And two of those interceptions came where his ball really, he couldn't complete the throw. First and 10 for the Tigers. Noah Bowden still a, a quarterback. Bot Bowden still a quarterback. Bowden, excuse me, as he goes to Bruton and he takes it out of bounds. Now, quickly, before we get too far into this, I want to know if you're on the Alabama A&M side, you come in with a 3-0 and record, you've lost four games in a row to this team. What do you tell your guys at halftime? First thing, I, I'll tell you, I don't want to hear about anything else but what we're doing right now, gentlemen. We're not getting it done. You're not, you're not focusing on today. You're thinking about tomorrow. Let's focus on the second half and get it done. That, that's exactly where I go because I think right now they're thinking of, you know, maybe forward thinking or, or, hey, look how good we were moving the ball so early, and they just – Quit thinking that they, they, they lost track of what they were doing. And you have to think about each individual play, good or bad, and move forward. Second and five coming up for the Tigers. And we have a whistle. The play was stopped right before he could get the ball snapped. So that one will probably go against the Tigers. They're going to mark him back five for an illegal procedure. So that will tack on and we'll come up with a second and ten. Again, the Tigers... <laughs> You know, they need to come out and make sure they maintain their focus and keep their momentum going because you could tell they started to believe as, as they started create getting those opportunities and then delivering on points. You could see you could see their intensity and their you know belief in themselves really get 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 powerful. Second and ten. Bowden completes it near the sidelines, has Kobe Ross over there, and he stepped out of bounds. Good completion, threw it at, you know, some traffic there, but he got the ball to his man. You know, I'll tell you, that it seems like they really love that wide outside pass. And to me, there's so much room for defenders to break on that ball that you may not see. And, and, and it's just a lot of room there, a lot of, a lot of area you got to cover to only get three, four, five yards. And, and that seems to be their bread and butter play. So a key third down here to start the second half for the Tigers. And the officials are going to call timeout Alabama A&M. So right away, the Bulldogs want to check something out. Yeah, and again, that, that the Bulldogs themselves, you know they didn't want to use a timeout right there. So something was wrong, and some people weren't ready, and they want to get it corrected right now. Okay. We are early in the third quarter, 24-14, Grambling out in front.
Welcome back, 24-14, Grambling out in front, Tigers. Bowden going on the quarterback keeper, trying to pick up the first down, but he is pushed back, should have gotten it. It was a third down and two yards to go as you see the helmet come off, so he will have to exit the ball game there for a play or two. But it's a first down for the Grambling Tigers, so he did a good job of picking it up. Now, and if you don't, when we have a chance, if you don't think that Alabama A&M was taking this game seriously, let me tell you they were. Coach Maynard said he asked his team this week, anybody in the room that's ever beaten Grambling, raise your hand. He said he looked around the room, he was the only guy who had his hand up because he beat Grambling when he was in college. Nobody on this team had won against Grambling, so they were taking it very serious for today, as today, as you see Elijah Walker on the keeper there. But that tells you how important they felt like this game was. We do have a flag out there, but they did think that this was a huge game, a game that they had to win, and he knew that the two years he's been here, they hadn't beaten Grambling, and the streak was four consecutive games. So uh, if anybody's thinking, okay, they, they went to sleep on this team, that, that's not the case. They took it seriously. Well, you can see when they came out, they didn't take it to sleep all week, right? But what happened was they came out so dominant, I felt like they thought, well, we're just going to roll this team, right? And that happens too, right? You, you take them serious all week long, you get a lot of confidence going. You just think, oh, well, we just got to finish the motions. We got this game. And then all of a sudden you turn around, you look, and you're down 24-14. After the flag, first and 20, a wide open receiver and a good pass from Bowden to James. Darrell James hauled it in, and that's going to be uh, close to another first down. It will be a first down for the Tigers. Right down the middle. It's been open, and now they're taking advantage of it. Look at that. Right in between the defenders. Perfect, perfect job. And again, James sat down right in between those defenders. James has had a big game so far. First and 10 for the Tigers. And I thought it was interesting that Coach Fobbs told us this week that his young quarterback, he had a lot of confidence in his ability to throw the ball, but more importantly, to throw the football on time. And we've seen that more and more as this game has progressed. Yeah, everyone gets all excited about strong arms and all that type of stuff and zip on the ball. But if you don't have timing and some accuracy, it doesn't matter. <laughs> doesn't matter how strong you are. Incomplete pass intended for Ross, Kobe Ross, the intended receiver. So it'll bring up a second down for the Tigers. I always tell people, throw an 80-yard ball, but no one can catch it. Who cares? Well, I was listening <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> listening to Coach Maynard this week, though, when he said, I raised up my hand, and I thought about that scene from yeah. any, any given Sunday where, you know, yeah. Al Pacino had his hand up. And like, yeah. It was kind of very similar, but that's how serious it was. And, and for some reason, Grambling – has had the last four games in this series. They've had the ability. Of course, Grambling has a history. You know, Coach Fobbs has a winning history, but then you're also talking about Greddy, Eddie Robinson and the legacy there. Pressure on the play, and he goes a little high. Looked like he was trying to hit Ross again inside on the slant, but pressure was coming from the Bulldogs. Yeah, you, you mentioned Grambling. They're an iconic program in SWAT. They are. By yeah. far, right? So they are known nationally. People who aren't familiar with the SWAT know Grambling. Right, because of Eddie Robinson and the history they have. So, you know, when you're lining up and you're playing them, you're, you're playing a historic team, and you should be ready for this game. And, again, I believe Alabama a was ready for the game. But, again, I just thought they had that success. They thought they could maybe put it into, into cruise control, and you cannot do that in a football game. Garrett Urban gets the punt away. Fair catch is called for and made by Hilaire. So that is where the Bulldogs will take over. We'll be back in just a minute, 24-14, Grambling leading Alabama in in
of the second half. They trail Grambling 24-14. Aquil Glass and company. They were rolling in the first quarter, but hit kind of a bumpy road in the second quarter. We'll see what happens here. Glass, and it's off the hands of Abdul Fatai Ibrahim, and he wanted a flag. He sure did. He felt like it. And it, man, that defender may have got his hand there kind of right when he got the ball there, maybe a little early, but uh, it was so close the refs were not going to throw that flag there. And he bumped him just at the very beginning when that ball came in. They're not going to throw it for that. Ray Estes, Estes on the defense. And this time the Grambling defense steps up to corral Gary Quarles. Nothing going right there. Good job by that defensive front by the Grambling Tigers. Joshua Reed, one of the guys in there. I'll tell you what, Ever Todd, the defense coordinator, and he's, he's also coaches the defensive linemen. Whatever he's uh, giving his guys, it's working. Whatever they're eating, whatever he's telling them, because they are doing a tremendous job and have only gotten stronger and stronger as this game's moving on. Big Wesley Green in there to disrupt a lot of the action inside, making a big play. So now we have a third down and about 11. Loss of one on the play there. A quill glass. All the way at quarterback. Under pressure again. Steps up. Does a beautiful job. And he has his man. It's complete to the big tight end, Kendrick Johnson. But a good job by Glass. Feeling the pressure in that pocket. Stepping up and delivering a perfect ball. Yeah, and again, they're, they're turning to the middle of the field there a little bit. And credit to his offensive line. They gave him a great pocket. Hands off to Quarles inside. Number eight on the stop. That is, uh, excuse me, number nine, Anderson, is there for the stop. As Quarles takes it for a short gain inside. Glass to throw it, and it's almost picked off. Estes with a great break on the football. Ray Estes, and man, that was a close to being another turnover. He has had him a heck of a football game right there. And he broke on, like I told you, those wide receiver out patterns. It just takes a long time for that ball to get outside. And if you're a cornerback sitting on that and they haven't done the give and go a whole lot, you can break on that ball. Now let's see if Alabama a goes up top, takes that same, and then punches that receiver up. If you've got cornerbacks jumping on that route, that means you can fake that. If, you, if your lineman can give you enough time, right, you, get, you do the fake pump and then you should have a free sailing up, up that sideline. And it looks like Alabama a and will call another timeout. Their second time out. <laughs> As they go over to the sidelines to discuss the situation. And it's, a, it, it, you know, the, every possession is so valuable in a game like this. When it, it won, it's a rivalry. It's a conference game. You know Alabama a and comes in here undefeated. You know the Grambling Tigers. They're in front of their home crowd. They'd love to be the team to knock off a and who, by the way, the Bulldogs are the champions from the spring season. Yeah, no, no, no question about it. A lot of, and, and maybe these early timeouts are to make their the coaches are seeing something, and they're saying we're not going to let it get away from us. If we have to use all three of them early, we're going to use them. But I'm not going to let it get away from us and, and save timeouts when it's not going to matter. We're going to stop mistakes before they happen. If we see something happen, we're going to correct it. Gary Quarles, third in the FCS in all-purpose yardage. He's averaging 166 a game. And outside of a, a couple of big runs in the first quarter, we haven't seen much from him. Third and nine now for the Bulldogs and a wheel glass. You're right, Quarles had the first uh, two drives he looked yeah. well. After that, it's been very, very slow. Play. Very quiet. Glass looking to throw, empty backfield. Fires inside, he had good timing on the play. Tried to hit Zabrian Moore, and a good defensive play by the Tigers. Estes again. Estes there. Yeah. Also number one, Myron S Stewart. Look at this. And look at the stunt there. Number 48 comes inside, almost stays on his feet. Estes again, good defense. Man, he's been all over the football field today. Yeah. He, he has really been. He is fired up for this one. As you see, Devonier Martin going back, going back to return the punt for the Tigers. And another whistle on the field. And it's illegal procedure against the Bulldogs, so that will back them up five more. Yeah, I guarantee it. What, what Coach Maynard is saying is, look, the Bulldogs are beating the Bulldogs right now. Right? I mean, you just you can't have four turnovers. Now you have penalties, mental errors. You can't do that and, and beat anyone. You just can't do it. And the Tigers are getting confidence, and they're playing better, and their execution is really starting to get, get spectacular. 
Ben Sikori goes down after the punt. The fair catch is called for by Devonier Martin. And so that is where the Grambling Tigers will take over. The Grambling Tigers who lead this ball game 24-14. We have 9-11 to go in the third. And the Grambling Tigers take over on offense. Noah Bowden looking way downfield, lays it up there, has a man, and there was some contact late. He was trying to hit Greg White. There was some contact on the play, but no flag so far. And we've seen the flags flying today, so I was almost expecting to see one come out on that play. Yeah, I think Caleb Riley, the cornerback there, got away with something on that, that particular play because – but I think what they decided probably on the fly there that it was uncatchable. But watch Caleb Riley at the very end. He dives and hits him right in the legs. But that ball, uh, man, I, that should have been a flag, I think. But, but they weren't uh, giving him, so it'll be a second down. But I love the play. They rolled uh, Bowden out just a little bit on that outside. And, boy, he, he kind of showed off his arm there and planned a nice throw. Coach Bob just kind of showing everyone we're not going to sit on that lead. We're going to be aggressive. Noah Bowden fires again, has a man open. It's a completed pass, and the ball is right at midfield. Well, Good again, catch by Xavier Cooper for the Tigers. Yeah, sorry, Butch. I pointed out earlier that, that the, the Bulldogs average 37 points a game, right? So you're going to have to score more points. If you start sitting on a lead uh, against the Bulldogs, you're, you're setting yourself up for failure, and, that's, and the Tigers are still attacking. They're, they're going full speed here. That's a very good point. They know how many points the Bulldogs can put on the board. And this time, that is Tice Fusilier in the backfield with his first carry. The freshman from New Iberia, Louisiana. And a good job by the Bulldogs' interior line there on the defensive side, shutting him down after a short gain. He's a true freshman, and Coach said he thought he might see some time today. Yeah, he was swung around early, but kept his composure and kept, you know, got a little yards out of that. But... That could have been ugly quickly in the freshman class. Like I said, kept his composure and got what he could and went down. Another big down coming up for the Tigers.
Bowden fires the crossing route. He tried to hit D.J. Clark, but he couldn't get the ball to Clark. The, one of the defenders nearby, Trinell Troutman, but that's one of those where you reach out and you go, I, I don't know. Alligator arms, and, and I don't blame him because McNeil, Jabron McNeil was also standing right there. He could see the him in his eyes as he was going to catch that ball. So he knew there was not just one, but there was going to be two people popping him if he caught that ball. So I'm not saying he, he, he it was just a tough one to catch, not, not just the ball, but knowing there's two guys who's got a target on you. So now another Third down and nine coming up for the Tigers. The G-men took control of this game in the second quarter. 24-14 if you're just joining, joining us, Grambling out in front. Bowden that time against the Blitz just dumped it off underneath. Confound James again for a completed pass, but uh, that's not going to get the first down. So the ball will go back over to Alabama A&M on the punt. But the Tigers had, you know, they still were attacking and, and, and moving that ball. And, and I'll tell you, Bowden certainly looks a lot more impressive in that pocket. And the offensive line seems to be getting better and, and giving him a better pocket as this game goes on. You can almost feel his confidence grow as the game continues to go on with, with every minute that he logs in this game. Mm -hmm. So that will bring on Garrett Urban to punt the ball away back to the Bulldogs. Urban gets his kick away. Fair catch is called for and made. And there is a flag down. It looks like the flag was down before he ever even caught the football. So yeah, I'm not sure. yeah, we did see the flag behind the punt return man. That was Odo Hilaire. And that's why. Because yeah. it was an illegal substitution. So that's how you can throw that bad flag down real quick like that. Yeah, and if you notice, he caught the ball like a bucket, like a, uh, it wasn't, he didn't catch the ball cleanly. It's like he caught it in his arms. It landed like he was holding a baby for a minute. I thought, oh my gosh, he's not gonna be able to grab that ball to really get off the punt. But despite the weird catch, uh, he was able to get off the solid punt. So there was a little bit too many things going on in that one little punt there, but I, I was concerned when he caught it. Referee Rory Bernard and company right. Jolly on the spot for that one. They called the, <laughs> They've got the uh, participation there. And so here we go with the kick again from Urban. Oh, and it goes into the end zone. So Urban made a bid at maybe getting that down inside the five, but it takes a Bulldogs bounce and rolls into the end zone. So they will start first and 10 from the 20. When we come back, there's only six minutes, 29 seconds to go here in the third quarter. Alabama AM, we've talked about their offense and their ability to score points uh, quickly, but you got to feel like this is going to be a big drive right here. Well, they got, you know, here, here's my thing. There's plenty of time in this game, right, for them to score, but they need some success on offense to get their confidence back and their swagger back. So they need a drive that's at least four, four or five first downs, even if they don't get points. They got to get a drive together and do something with it. First and 10 for the Bulldogs. Glass with time. Has a man open, and he connects to Hilaire right down the sidelines, and that is a big strike. That is the one you're talking about right there. <laughs> that, that'll start to get you confidence, right? Now, that's one. That's one first down, but you got to make something. And look at the offensive line, though. They gave him time. The Tigers have been doing a lot of different twists and turns and, and stunts inside, and it's been confusing him right there. They did a great job of picking it all up. This time, he dumps it off to Quarles. And he's pushed out of bounds, maybe back to the original line of scrimmage. Yeah, and I'd love to see them get Quarles to have him escape and kind of go just inside, outside uh, in the flat right there in front of those linebackers just off to the side and see if he can do something with it. Because I think him in space is dangerous. Outside of those first two or three drives, the Grambling defense has really held up strong in this game. The pass completed to Zabrian Moore and he's dropped just short of midfield. Yeah, again, one of those wide receiver screens where you send your two receivers up, they connect with the blocker, and you're asking your receiver to, to make someone miss. I think the big big part of college football now that's that's different than maybe 10, 15 years ago, it's, it's creating a wild field, creating separation, and then the tackling just has to be stellar. And that's why when you see these guys that are missling and they're trying to just knock guys out, when they miss tackles, you, you allow a big play. 
Second and eight for Glass in the offense, and he almost went down. He's still on his feet, but number 94, Kobe Foster, came on to make the sack after Glass actually pulled off on a Houdini there, getting away from two defenders, but right there was Foster to finish him off on the sack. Yeah, Todrick Paul, and it looks like Martavius Dotson, they come flying in there. Man, they just, you know, when you got a big hungry guy coming and he misses his meal, he's not happy, but his partner cleaned it up for him. You got to like that. Yeah, Kobe Foster did have that look what I found <laughs> look on my face here. Glass well, it just really ran right into him. So just like that, the Tigers defense will force the Bulldogs into another punt. Back to return is Devonir Martin, and he got out of the way at the last second, but that may have been too close on the coverage there. They may not have given him an opportunity to catch the football because we do have a flag down. Looks like Masio Thornhill just got... And I, I keep mentioning this because I think in college football, all around, all levels, the, the, the punt team is just in the way of a catch way too many times. Yeah, that was Ma Maceo Thornhill. Let's take a look at number 24, Ray Estes, because he's had a whale of a ball game for the Tigers. It starts with that recovery right there on, on a kickoff. Yeah, he, he has just been, look, look at, he, he is just, you know, they call the ball hawk, right? And that's just guy who's just everywhere and hungry. And, 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 and if, you're, if you're looking at this, you're a young player. The thing he does is wherever he is, he's attacking the ball, right? We also had a couple of good tackles by him as well, not just break from a defensive back standpoint, but he attacks the ball, does not wait for it in the air. You're going and getting it. Six foot 180, not the biggest guys, but he's very big on the field today. So the Tigers take over on offense. The give is to Bruton. Darquez Bruton on the takeoff, and he goes inside for a couple of yards as he takes the handoff. Looks like Spencer Perry came up there and uh, delivered a sentence. When he came up there, it was, it was a pounding. It's the kind of tackle you love to see as a defensive coordinator. But second and five, still got five yards on the play. Noah Bowden has gone all the way today at quarterback. He's a freshman out of New York. Bowden looking to pass on second down. Down the sideline, has his man, a perfect strike, and it's a foot race to the end zone, and Kobe Ross is in for the grambling touchdown off a perfect pass from Noah Bowden right down the sideline. Well, you know, you keep running that wide receiver out, wide receiver out, you just you, you're never going the distance. And right there, they just ran that go pattern. And, and you talk about... He did not break stride at all right down the sideline. Perfect pass. And again, the offensive line giving him the, the time he needs. And he relaxed, and that was just pitch and catch. Well, and it was the pass was just, he, you know, you throw it in the bucket. He just <laughs> dropped it in the bucket. It was a perfect pass. But you have to be impressed with the fact that the way the Grambling Tigers are attacking, attacking, attacking. They have the lead in this ball game, and they have continued to push the envelope. And once again, the young quarterback, Noah Bolton, connects on the bomb to Kobe Ross for a grambling touchdown. As you see, the officials examine the play, and it's a touchdown. It is good as they reviewed it. So it's another touchdown for the grambling Tigers. Garrett Urban. On for the extra point, and he drills it. So just like that, Grambling out in front, 31 to 14. Yeah, and, uh, Eric Marty, the offensive coordinator, love the way he just keeps attacking. Look, you look left, look left, and there it is. Your receiver's wide open straight down the field. Yeah, number 24, Caleb Riley may have lost his step there, but he was already beat. That's why he lost his... Uh, balance when he tried to recover but Kobe Ross was already behind him and the Tigers like you said Eric Marty the new offensive coordinator he's coming in and he's setting an attitude with his ability to continue to strike and strike and strike and strike yeah, and, and again you know, success is just this thing that just goes right I don't care what you do for a living or what you're doing you start to have success you start to believe in yourself you believe in the coordinator you believe in your quarterback you now believe in players as a quarterback you believe in that right tackle he's going to get it done right you start to believe in everyone around you right and i think that's what starts to create that attitude and again you're 
think of the Tigers, you, you know you're playing a really good football team that came in here, and you saw how yeah. they looked in that first quarter. You've got a moment, you've got some breaks, and then you capitalize, and it's just the Tigers are looking stronger and stronger as this game gets going. And if you weren't with us at the beginning of the game, we said that Coach Bob came out and said that basically he felt like Noah Bowden was the future of this team at quarterback. He talked about he's played four quarterbacks throughout the year so far. Grambling, uh, one in three coming in, and they'd already played four quarterbacks. So this is the kid he felt like was the future, and we're, we're getting a glimpse today. We're getting a glimpse. Yeah, now, I will look at the Bulldogs, and let's, let's take the Bulldog perfect, perce uh, perception right now. And, and they just look flat. They, they look flat. There's no swagger. You don't see anyone. And again, when, you, when you're, you're kicking yourself in the teeth, <laughs> no one's going to be smiling or happy. But right now, again, it's 31-14. You know you have an explosive offense. You had a big play, and you just got one first down the last series. Right now, you just got to go there and put, put, put something together, put some points together, and attack. In the back of your mind, though, you still have to think this team scores 40 points a game. Yep. We have 334 left in the third quarter, so they got time. Yes. So it, it's it's not over. Uh, Grambling is in really good shape right now, but it is not over by a long shot here. As you see the Bulldogs taking over on offense. It's just like their offense has still been attacking your defense. You better you better keep it attacking. Glass fires over the middle, has his man. Ibrahim in traffic. What a great catch that was for a first down for the Bulldogs. Ibrahim's a special player. I, I mean, he, he really is. Uh, not only does he does he kind of, he, 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 he goes and gets the ball. Right there, he didn't have a lot of separation, but he just made sure his body got to that ball. Glass this time to Zebra, Zabrian Moore. And Moore gets what he could get out of it, but it's not much as number 40, Brendan Vaughn, makes the stop for the Tigers. And when you, when you see that play again, guess who else was there? Number 24, Essence. He was right there in the mix, confusing, messing up that play. And I'm telling you, I think he loves seeing those little wide receiver outs because he's always in the mix there. Second down and 10 coming up he's for the Bulldogs. Today. Glass in the pocket under pressure, and he just throws it away. Big number 95 in there right in his face, putting on the pressure. That's Javon Carter. Yeah, I mean, there's no one blocking him. I, I don't know how you allow that or how that can happen. But look, there's no, I mean, 62 to the lookout block, just kind of let him touch his shoulder and just let him go right at your quarterback. And he throws it right at the feet of his running back. So I've, maybe that's why they didn't throw the flag there on intentional grounding. But there's no doubt he wasn't trying to complete anything. He's just ticked off. I mean, that, that's, a, that's a mad quarterback right there on that play. The Grambling defense is doing a really good job of frustrating Glass, actually, from the second quarter on to this point. Third down and 10 for the Bulldogs. More pressure again, and he has to throw it away. And now the flag is going to come in for an illegal hit on Blake Thomas. They're going to call it a personal foul, roughing the quarterback, and that's unfortunate because it was great defense by Grambling. They had him stopped, but the flag will give the Bulldogs a first down. Those are the plays that you look back later and you're like, you can't do that. Thomas played phenomenal, right? He had him. You already have Glass frustrated, but he picks him up. If you watch that play over again, he kind of elevates him, and then he bows him back. Now again, back in the day, that was a perfect tackle. Wouldn't have been a problem. But you can't drive a quarterback into the ground. If that's a running back, that's fine. You can't do it to a quarterback. So Rory Bernard there says we have offsetting penalties, penalties against both teams, so they're just going to redo the down. The Tigers were given a gift there on that one. Look at him pile drive him in. When he took that extra step and kind of jumped in the air with the quarterback and then made sure he landed on him and kind of tightened up on his back, that's where the flag went flying right there. But they don't get penalized on it. It's a clean play. You still got your hit on your quarterback, so now all's good. <laughs> so we just do it over after that. 
the Tigers have been waiting when they see Glass with the empty backfield. They've been sending the blitz. And now we're going to have a timeout called by Grambling. And that time it looked like they were going to play coverage. But every down before them when they came up, first charge timeout to the Grambling Tigers. But what I was going to say was the Grambling has been doing a great job of when he comes out in that empty backfield set of putting the pressure because the lineman has one guy to beat up front. He does the swim move and he's in the backfield. Yeah, they've been mixing up the stunts. Much love, much yeah, they've been love. mixing up the stunts, doing a great job I'm of confusing here, Alabama A&M and m and Ohio right line now. on the feet. And the Bulldogs have had trouble with the turnover today, and that has been the difference in this game. You saw the and interception from Glass, and then the great play there by Estes to recover the kickoff. And then Glass, under pressure, fires another interception, that one by Mitchell, Quincy Mitchell. It's been that kind of day, and watch this. The ball is knocked out by Anderson. Glass scrambles behind it, and Cameron... <laughs> Richardson, the big fella, number 91, picks it up and rumbles into the end zone for a touchdown. So those defensive plays help set the stage to where we are at 31-14 right now. Glass wanted to go, and it's intercepted by the Tigers. It was a double slant pattern, and Glass was trying to go underneath. He was trying to go to the second person coming in on the, the slant, and it was intercepted by the Grambling Tigers. Yeah, I'll tell you what, we were just showing all those turnovers and, and how the, the Tigers' defense was rattling the a Alabama A&M. Beals on the interception. Yeah, and, and right there, the double pump, I thought he was freeing up someone, but threw it right into coverage, and Fields uh, gets that ball, and, <laughs> and I'm telling you, just the woes for the Bulldogs just keep happening. Well, that, they run that double slant, and, you know, he saw the first guy, and he didn't like what he saw because he pumped it. And when right. he pumped it, by the time he tried to come to the second guy, it was tipped up into the air, and it was intercepted by Fields. A good job there. He was right in the right spot, alertly, and he picked up another turnover for the Grambling Tigers. Yeah, and not enough said, I'll tell you, for <laughs> Everett Todd, uh, defense coordinator, really, really dialing it in right, and his players making him look great. Uh, just a great job by the Tigers. Again, we, we can say that the, the Bulldogs have lost their focus but the Tigers are not letting them get it back <laughs> at the end of the day. That is the third interception of the day for Aquil Glass. And coming in, he had two on the season. <laughs> so he's doubled his numbers in one game. That's Jonathan Williams, you see, walking slowly off the field for the Bulldogs. That was after the play. He was shaken up on the play, but he's going off on his own power. And that is always a good sign, one of the offensive linemen. 6'2", 270-pound junior from Mobile, Alabama. But, man, like I said, Glass coming in with three interceptions today. That was not the way a lot of people would have predicted it would have gone. But that's why we play the game. Three interceptions and that fumble, right, before turnovers. So Grambling takes over. First and 10 with two minutes and 16 seconds to go here in the third quarter. Bowden hands off, and the wow, in the backfield is Bruton, and he has no chance. Darquez Bruton is hit in the backfield. He's going to lose about two or three on the play. That was a Bulldog team meeting on the other side of the line is what that was. And, again, I think the, the uh, now you're dealing with, okay, it, we have got to make something happen. From a Bulldog standpoint, they need to make a big play. And defensively, they need to do it for their offense. Tigers coming back now after a loss of three. Second down and 13 to go. AM faked the blitz, and so the Tigers walked away from it. They're being very deliberate now, taking their time. Bowden in the pocket, has some protection. Now he's going to run with the football, and he slides down quickly. Not taking a shot there. That's a good, smart play by the young freshman quarterback. <laughs> you, don't, you don't impress anybody by taking needless shots, right, at this point. Just be smart. And I like the fact that he didn't try to force anything there. What, he went and got two, three, four yards, probably two or three, and, and then just sat down. You, you go for your next play, big third down. You know, the other thing Coach told us about this week when he was talking about Noah Bowden, talked about his toughness. Said this kid is a really, really tough kid for a quarterback. Here he is, rolling to his right. 
Breaks away from one tackler. Lost it downfield. Has a man open. And did he get the foot down? The official said no. It was Daryl Clark. DJ to his teammates, and he was very close to having another big completion down the sideline. But Bowden did a nice job here of just throwing it where if it's going to be caught, it's going to be my guy, and that's all. And you can tell it, uh, that left foot just on that white line. It was closer than I thought, actually. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, we were almost locked out there by the view. He was, he was very close to getting one foot in, and that's all he needed. Yeah. Uh, it was a good catch, though. But, but big stop for Alabama A&M. So the Tigers are going to attempt a long field goal from Garrett Urban. And this one is no good. It's wide to the left if you're watching at home, but wide to your right. But Garrett Urban just kind of hooked that one a little bit to the left. So a scoring opportunity is missed by the Grambling Tigers. Now that may be the window for the Bulldogs to open up if they can get their offense to actually open up <laughs> and do something. I mean, now it's now it's about you know time is of the essence. Now they, we know that they're explosive. We know that they score, you know, just under 37 points a game. For all, if they're going to do that and hit their average, they better put on the gas right now. And you can tell it looks like the Tigers are loosening up just a little bit on defense now. Are they bringing everybody up now? First and ten for the Bulldogs. 41 seconds to go here in the third. Glass. Throws it underneath, has his man, that's Hilaire, keeps his balance, picks up a couple more before he steps out of bounds. And uh, this is where you're going to have to see, it's going to have to happen with Glass. He's going to have to keep his head up, get out there, forget about those three interceptions, mm -hmm. and make some big plays down the field. Yeah, and the Tigers look like right there they were just bringing forward. And it's probably what they're going to do for a little bit. And every once in a while they'll surprise them. Glass again. Throws underneath, and it's incomplete. He was trying to hit Cameron Young, C.J. Young, but he could not hang on, and he had some blockers out in front, so they might have had something going on there. Every time when they throw that wide receiver screen, and I don't know if that's how they design it or not, but Glass always throws it to their backside, and the receiver has to literally do a spin, catch it, and then turn it up. And a lot of times they make something happen there, but you need to see him throw them in front of them so they can just take off. Third down and a couple of yards coming up for the Bulldogs. Empty backfield for Quill Glass. They got numbers on the left side on receivers there. Three on the left. Glass keeps it and he's tripped up in the backfield. He could not get out for a second. He had a hole. Looked like he could have gotten to the first down, but it closed on him very quickly. So now a big fourth down coming up as we come to the end of the third quarter with Alabama a and The Bulldogs eyeing a fourth down play coming up.
I think Glass a good quarterback. Mm -hmm. Tiger just on the loose. Yeah. Tiger's on the loose, man. Glass get broken. And while we were away, everyone, Alabama A&M did go for it on fourth down. Glass tossed the pass, and it was incomplete. So the Grambling Tigers will take over on downs as Glass was incomplete on the fourth down play. There was also a penalty that made it fourth and on about seven. So here come the Tigers with the football and it goes to Bruton on the carry as he takes it forward and is jammed up after his gain of about a couple of yards there. Yeah, huge missed opportunity uh, for the Bulldogs and they give the, the Tigers we here in, in great shape. Uh, right now they got a player Grand down. Up in here. Looks Some like uh, big Tyler Thomas, offensive lineman. Freshman out of Baltimore, Maryland. Yeah, Tyler's like the best offensive lineman for the Tigers, so they're going to check out this big fella really closely. Earlier in the game, you may remember it, he recovered a huge fumble. It yeah. was a bad exchange. The ball was loose, and it was big Tyler Thomas who went down and made the recovery. So Grambling, they're going to walk off and talk over to Coach Bobs while the trainers take a look at Tyler Thomas. Yeah, hopefully it was just one of those stingers, you know, as they call it, where it's one of those ones that shake up your legs and, you just need a moment to kind of collect yourself to you, it's like your body takes a slow register okay my arms working my legs working you know and then it looks like he stands up moving on his own own accord but when he went down it looked like he was he wasn't sure what was hurting and how and why but but uh, good news is he's uh moving pretty good off off the field he's 65 230 220 pounds a transfer from kent state came in and according to coach Bobs, he's their most consistent offensive lineman so he's going to try to get that big guy back in there because he's been providing a lot of protection for the young quarterback today which was something also interesting that coach Bob said after the spring he said we have to rework that offensive line and they may have gone to Noah Bowden earlier in the season except he wanted to get the line more of a chance to gel and come together so it's going to be a second down and about 10 yards after Bruton was caught short, and that was going to be incomplete. Bruton had no gain on first down, so they come back with the pass on second down, and it's an incompleted pass. Yeah, and if uh, James, Darrell James, could have turned around a little bit quicker, he'd have had a catch, right? I just don't think he was expecting that ball to be delivered when it was from a timing standpoint, but because the Bulldogs had so much pressure early, he had to release it quick. But it, again, great decision uh, by Bowden on, on how he got rid of that ball. So Bowden with a third and 10 for the Grambling Tigers. They send the blitz his way again, but he completes the pass. It is Cash Foley with his first catch of the day, and what a job by Cash Foley to get that ball upfield and pick up that first down. Go we'll get the cash. <laughs> get the cash. That's a football player's name, isn't it? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's like a show me the money man, isn't it? <laughs> And look, you know, making a miss. And again, that's, you know, I was talking about tackling too. That wasn't one of those they were just going to knock his block off, but it wasn't sure tackling. This whole game's designed to get one-on-one, -on -one, and that's what they did. He, he made the, the guy miss and got a huge play out of it. DeMarco Gibson missed the tackle, and then Cash Foley picked up the first down, but we have a whistle on the field. And the officials have another flag down. Yeah, it's on the Tigers. I think someone got off a little bit early. That is our referee, Rory Bernard. He's actually gotten a lot of TV time today. Yeah, he's got some big muscles there, too. He's kind of got his flex on here for this game. <laughs> I, think all, I think all these refs now, they all run around and go, go work out really, really hard before the games. And I guess the bigger they are, they figure they less, less a player is going to mess with them <laughs> on a call. Well, <laughs> he's got some football, I'm sure, somewhere in his background. Oh, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. there's no doubt about that. So first and 15 after the penalty for the Grambling Tigers. Bruton takes the handoff inside, and he goes forward for about six. Remember that old campaign from Reebok, uh, Terry Tate, office linebacker? Remember that one where he's running around knocking people off and 
That was one of my favorite favorite things. I wish they had done that longer. Him running around, knocking people out for throwing aluminum cans in the regular trash and knocking motorcycles in. So <laughs> go look it up on on YouTube. People it. looking, it's on it's on YouTube. Terry Tate, office linebacker, hilarious. Dre beyond <laughs> Carter on the stop on that last play. So second and nine. Now for the Tigers. Bowden in trouble, still on his feet, rolling to his right, avoids a couple of tacklers, fires into the end zone, and it's incomplete. That's a heady play right there just to get rid of the football after he avoided the pressure and the traffic in the backfield. You know what's interesting on that? When you watch him, right, a lot of times a quarterback will just start sprinting, right? They feel pressure. Watch how calm he is. Okay, one guy missed. I'm going to take a step. I'm still looking. Whoa, another guy. I'm gonna, and then I got guys on my heels, but I'm still going to look down. And he looks relaxed as he got rid oh, of the ball. Hell. That's what's <laughs> impressive. A guy who's young, a freshman, and you talked about it a couple times. He looks like he's getting more and more relaxed throughout the game. And certainly right there you see it because that's an uncomfortable moment, and he looked comfortable. Third and nine for the G-men. Foley goes in motion to the left. To give to Bruton. He's trying to find a hole cutting around, and uh, he's going to be stopped short of the first down. So we'll probably see Garrett Urban again to attempt the field goal. You know, Grambling getting, getting points out of this drive and, and getting the first down, not settling back then, still attacking. That's huge. They have another three points on time, a huge factor now for the Bulldogs to be able to come back. You know, just under 12 minutes now. 27-yard field goal attempt coming up by Garrett Urban, the junior from Houston, Texas. Went to Fort Bend Travis High School. Devonair Martin sets it down. The kick is up, and it's through there. So just like that, the Grambling Tigers tack on another three. Tigers, thanks to the field goal, 27 yards from Garrett Urban as we head to the break, 34-14. I can. I can believe it. I can believe it. Yes, yes. Believe it. Believe it. The Tigers is running loose, man. It's all good, man. I put them Bulldogs in the cage. I don't think no, I don't think they overhyped. I don't think they overhyped. I think they got a squad. I think Glass is better than what he's playing right now. But they, you know, they probably was sleeping on the ground saying, "That's something you can't do." Boys will wake you up real quick. The Tigers just tacked on three more to take a 34-14 lead in Grambling. And it's important to note that coming into this game, the Tigers were only averaging 6.5 points a game. In fact, you'd have to go all the way back to November 16th, 2019. The game against Mississippi Valley was the last time they scored this many points, 34. I'll tell you what, they love it. And, 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 and a little bit more knowledge, they've only scored 10 points in five of their last seven games. I mean, that is just crazy. And to watch what they've done today. And again, four turnovers, five turnovers now uh, have, have certainly helped. But you still have to capitalize when you get those turnovers and turn them into points. 
and the Tigers have done that, and you've seen them get confidence. Confidence is a moving force. So the kick by Urban will be returned by Hilaire, and he cuts back inside, and it falls down near the 30-yard line. And that's where AM will go back on offense, excuse me, near the 20-yard line, where AM will go back on offense. And again, now, I mean, I, I, I honestly think, you know, it's got to be a look. you got to quit looking at the scoreboard. Let's just get this drive. No matter how we have to, let's get seven. And then we'll figure out what time's left at that point, and we'll deal with it then. You can't keep looking at the big picture of, of how we're going to do all this. You just got to, you know, kind of that term, you just keep chopping wood. They just got to break the axe out, quit looking at the big tree, just swing the axe once, one swing at a time. Well, watching this game reminds me of something else Coach Bob's told us this week when he said he was pretty pleased with the way his defense had been playing. He said he just could not generate any offense up to this point. Thus, the quarterback move today, and it's reaping some big benefits as the pass is completed right there to Hilaire. He gets it upfield as quick as he can. You know, o Odu Hilaire made the catch. His, his teammates call him OJ. Brings the juice. Yeah, I guess he does. <laughs> Nice play there for a first down. And, and you know what? There's no pace for, for the Bulldogs right now. I mean, the first thing you do if you're trying to come back, you run that football to the referee, let them spot the ball, and you get moving. Now, again, it looks like Grambling, I believe, called the timeout. So. Another timeout called by the Tigers from Grambling. But again, the Bulldogs have to play with some pace. I mean, you, 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 you don't have much time. If you're a receiver right now, you got to get moving. We have a timeout on the field, so we will pause for a timeout in the booth. 34-14, Grambling. Butch Alcindor along with Jorge Vargas here calling Alabama A&M versus Grambling. And as you can see, the Tigers are out in front 34-14. We have 11-13 to go in the ball game, but the Bulldogs are in possession of the football. They just made a first down and a quill glass. He can put some points on the board in a hurry. So he has his work cut out for him here. 11-13 to go in the ball game. Glass. In the pocket, had some pressure in his face, and he almost got that one to Anderson. Tried to lob it over the defender there, and it's an incompleted pass. Again, they go to that outside pass, Butch. Donald Lee almost broke on that ball. I mean, it hangs out there a long time. It looks like, see Donald Lee tracking that ball? He almost is able to get that. I'm telling you, you just keep going to the well too long, and then defenders can just uh, anticipate what's getting ready to happen. Let's see his second down here. I know it's his first, but let's see his second. 
Second down for the Bulldogs. Glad fakes one way, comes back with the screen the opposite way, goes to Hilaire, and Hilaire shows you how quickly the Bulldogs can get on the board. Can he make it? It's a foot race, and he dives into the end zone for a touchdown. What a play by Odu Hilaire. With a great play, the wide receiver screen, and he just showed some of that explosiveness right there. Odu Hilaire on the touchdown from Glass. Odu, how do you do, my friend? I, we were just talking <laughs> during one of the breaks about how special some of these players were, and if you just give them a little space, how they could break something that's just a small play into something huge, and that's exactly what they did. And you said, hey, they, yeah. get, they get something going, they get excited, look out. Yeah, and what a, what a big play that was. And you could see Glass faking one way, getting a little bit of the momentum going that way, coming back to Hilaire near the sidelines. And once he cut back to the middle, he just showed off that explosiveness, how quickly he can turn on the Jets, and he's gone. Yeah, I mean, and it was good blocking downfield too, right? You had receivers that really, really stayed on a block. And again, you know, one thing I, yeah, that, that's so funny to me, people talk like, about blocking uh, and up, they they just knocking, just stay in their way. Right, right there, it was a little center kind of and receiver I think screen. It's be a and then he just took real, off. Real, right, you had guys just, just, just kind of shade people, keep sure. them out of his way, and he just turned on the gas. Look at him right there. He saw that seam, and he's like, no, I'm out. Yeah, the outlaws have a lot of talent in that group of players, and that's just one of them right there. We saw right there a quill glass firing to OJ as his teammates call him. His name is Odu, but his teammates like to call him OJ. So OJ Hilaire shows you how quickly you can put six points on the board at Alabama a &M. Yeah, I like Odu myself. I, I, I kind of like that. <laughs> <laughs> So they got the ruling. They wanted to see whether or not he was down near the goal line. So it took a while to get that ruling. But the touchdown is good. And so that will bring on Spencer Corey on to attempt the extra point. Corey's extra point is good. And so after the big play from Glass to Hilaire, the Bulldogs. Jump back into this ball game with a long touchdown pass. 34-21, Grambling still out in front.
It was a commercial break. And we have an exciting one here coming off that big touchdown from Glass to Hilaire. The Grambling Tigers will now get the football with an opportunity to answer. They still lead 34-21 now in this ball game as the Bulldogs pull to within seven more. You know, they've cut that lead a little bit. So we got 10.53 to go. Still a lot of time in football time. That's forever. So the kick is going to be a little short pooch kick. It's near the sidelines. It goes out of bounds. So that's a flag against the Bulldogs. That was a mistake because that will give the Tigers excellent field position as they go back on offense. That's just as a kicker, you get too cute trying to put it too precise. You got to give yourself some room there. So I get the whole idea of doing the pooch, pooch kick. And, and again, it worked for the Tigers earlier, right? That's where S just made one of his big plays. Uh, being able to tip that ball and recover and, and really uh, turn the tide of this game truly in the Tigers' direction. But right there, you give them extra field position. Uh, and again, now it's three and out. You got to give the big three and out too uh, for uh, for the Bulldogs. Number 77, Tyler Thomas, back in the game for the Tigers. That's a good sign. He left with an injury last time we saw them on offense. This time the pass is incomplete from Noah Bowden. Threw it near the sideline, an incomplete pass, so that will stop the clock here. So this is a big drive for Grambling because it's, it's still a two-score ball game, so you would think they're still in control here, but you'd like to chew up some of that clock and pick up a couple of first downs if you can't put points on the ball. Well, I think that was supposed to be a nice, safe play, but Phillip Hopkins read it so well, he just threw it away. That, line, that uh, uh, defensive end, he took off, and he was reading that play, so he just threw it away. No, Jackson Zachary State just line got to step it up some, too. Second and 10. The handoff goes to Cash Foley as he comes around on the jet sweep. And Foley is stopped by Amont, Armont, Armani Holloway inside, one of the twins. But as you're speaking of good, safe plays, is an opportunity, a play that has an opportunity to break. But look at the play right there falling back in by Philip Hopkins, also assisting on the play. He's the guy who really made the play. Good job. Yeah. So third down coming up for the Tigers. So Alabama A&M would love to get a stop here. Third and six to go for the first down to continue the drive. Bruton is to Bowden's left, right, excuse me, in the backfield. Bowden under pressure, but he slips away from it, steps out. Now he's going to pull it down. And where did they mark him out of bounds? I think he's going to be just a little shy of the first down, but that's a good decision also. Yeah, I think he decided a little late but uh, of, of when to run it. But when he did, I think at, at that critical part of the game, that's when you got to you know, go ahead and take that hit, I think, and, and make sure you get the first down. So right here, a little too, too careful. It's fourth and short right now for the Grambling Tigers as they discuss exactly what to do on this situation. And they will send out the punting team. So Garrett Urban. Short discussion. We'll be back on the field. <laughs> That sounds, you know, I'm sure Coach is looking at the scoreboard. He's saying, hey, there's still a lot of time left in this ball game. Let's not give him great field position. Remember, we had that bad snap earlier that went over his head that he saved that he was able to get away. Low snap, but Urban handles it. Gets his kick away. Alaire makes the fair catch right around the 19-yard line. So that will bring back the Bulldogs on offense for another shot at it. we still got nine minutes to go in this ball game. And, and basically, you're a Bulldog fan. You're thinking two touchdowns. And I will say that big Allaire uh, touchdown a moment ago, the whole posture of the Bulldog sidelines changed. You started seeing guys clapping, a lot more conversation, talking. And, and again, the posture of what they're doing. And now you got to see the sense of urgency right now. This is where having a coach like Connell Maynard on the sideline is, is a big advantage for you because he's a guy who had a successful career. You know, he was the MVP in the Arena Bowl. You know, was, was of course, then he not only was a good football player, he did his acting stuff with Jamie uh, Foxx's right. body <laughs> double in any given Sunday. So he's done a, he's a guy who has some cred. You know, the guys can look at him and say, man, you've been there, you've done that, you've done a lot of stuff. And you, you can take a lot from that as you see Connell right there in the middle of that huddle trying to spread some of that inspiration and wisdom to his team. What I, what I like about the, the way his coaching style is, if you notice, there's a lot of times he's letting his coaches coach. He lets his offense coordinators do their job. And he steps in at key moments, and you see him address the team and, and things that he's seeing from the outside. Hey, guys, here's what I need. And he's giving inspirational talks, et cetera. 
but he's, he's he, he knows when to jump in but he's also allowing his coaches to coach and showing that I think coaches that jump in too much and overstep the coordinators then all of a sudden you got a team that may not be fully vested in their coaches well if you're too reactionary on the sideline that bleeds over to your team mm -hmm. you know you want to always project that uh, sense of confidence and calm and so first down for the Bulldogs as they go back to work good protection this time ball slips out of glasses hand and he got back on it but it's called an incomplete pass because he did go through the passing motion but he didn't take a chance he got down on that football in a hurry yeah I, I agree with that you know there's no like I'm not gonna leave it to a call we all saw that right my hand was going forward it should be a, a incompleted pass but he went in and dive on it anyway and just to catch some of the folks up if you weren't with us at the beginning of the game there was a downpour a huge downpour so I can, I'm sure there's still spots on the field that are pretty wet and that that ball is pretty slippery so that time you saw him make the punt the pump and the ball slipped out of his hand but he was making that throwing motion thus it's an incomplete pass glass again passing inside has Ibrahim with a nice sliding catch just shy of midfield Ibrahim's had a, a, a fantastic game there and again that's where you got to run the ball to the ref let him spot the ball and let's move I mean you got 831 left you need two touchdowns and you're deep you got to give your time defense time to, to stop the Tigers as well big first down for the Bulldogs another pass to CJ Young and that was a dangerous pass as Fontenot was right there Keenan Fontenot the senior from Lake Charles uh, he, he, he kind of scared you there a little bit if you're an Alabama a and fan those Tigers cornerbacks and defensive backs are jumping on those routes because they run it so much and, and, and it's just dangerous now you would think they'd be giving them a lot more room right now though quite frankly with the score but I like the fact that they are playing in tight making them making them change that play call second down they go to the other side to Hilaire, and he's bounced out of bounds after picking up five. So Odu Hilaire on the catch. It's going to set up a third and about five. Now this time he threw it to the front side of him. They've had that backside, but they've had to spin. And you can see he can grab that ball and just go up the field instead of spin around. Third down, throws underneath, and what a catch by Hilaire. He's going to be... Just shy of the first down, but what a great catch reaching behind him to bring that football in. And if you look at where the official is marking that, I'm not sure he didn't get to it. Uh, it, it he appeared to be short, but if you look at the spot, they may actually have the first down on the pass, and it is a first down. Wow. He appeared to be a whole yard shy of that first down, but he got a really good spot from the official, and the Bulldogs have themselves a big first down. Yeah, there's something going on with Hilar as well, though. He's been the last couple times. Looks like he's got something going on with him. First and ten. Glass hanging in that pocket under pressure. Completes it underneath. And he goes to Zabrian Moore this time. Number eight hauling in the catch. Bulldogs just look like they're, they're, they're still kind of slow moving and not, not in as big a hurry as they need to be. Time is really, really, truly going to be an issue here. And uh, they're taking their time, calling the plays. Now, again, if you rush too much and you don't, and you're not successful, then you're you're, you're not doing as well. Then you just got to keep this drive going. Though. Second and six. Pressure coming. Glass fires out near the sideline, and he almost had his man again. He was trying to hit more, Zabry and more, but good coverage on the play by the Grambling Tigers. Quincy Mitchell. Yeah, he already has an interception. You know, he was looking for number two there. And again, look how close there was because he's throwing off his back foot. He's not able to fire it as much as he can. And you can tell that ball is just coming out a little too slow. But there's a cat and mouse game going on in this one. You see Grambling, now we're blitzing, now we're not, now we're blitzing. And, and that's how they, that time they had a lot of pressure right in his face. And again, movement up front might be a free play here for the Bulldogs. First down on the catch to Fatai. Ibrahim, Abdul Fatai Ibrahim on the catch, and that'll be a first down. I think it was Brendan Vaughn who jumped. Yeah, it looked like someone on the defensive side jumped, so it is offside. Offsides against the Tigers. It's going to be just declined, and the Bulldogs will get the first down on this play. Yeah, he, was, he knew he did it right when that ball 
happen. But, you know, in plays like that, you got to keep keep playing through it because you know they're going to keep moving forward with the ball. So you you got you to gotta continue to play. First down for Alabama A&M. Glass comes back the opposite way, and that was an interesting pass because he overthrew Cameron Young, and he was short of Zabrian Moore. So he kind of just threw that one away, but we do have a flag down on the field. Yeah, I'm not sure what he's seeing here. Could he call illegal grounding of the football? Let's see. No, he, he's out know. of the pocket. It's against Grambling for defensive holding. So that will be another first down for the Bulldogs with 623 to go in this today. game. That's the beauty of the college football game. There's so many ways to stop the clock. You look yep. up, and it seems like you always got time until you don't. <laughs> <laughs> First and 10 to go for the Bulldogs. Glass throws it away. He threw it in the direction of Zabrian Moore, the wide receiver, the big 6'3", 195-pound graduate student from Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Went to Paul Bryan High School. I love that. You got time until you don't. <laughs> it's 6'18 to go in the game. Second and 10 for the Bulldogs. Tigers kind of flaked, faked the blitz there. Brendan Vaughn stuck his head in there like he might come. But they're giving the, they're giving the receivers room for that little wide receiver out. He does come. Glass gets it off. And it's Cameron Young who's thrown down. C.J. Young makes the reception underneath, but that's just going to cost the Bulldogs some time. Not much happening on that play. Yeah, Myron Stewart there with the coverage and then and, and short tackling, right? What they're trying to do is just get a guy open, make somebody miss, and he wasn't missing there. So big third down, third and about six. Cost you 30 seconds. Grambling coming quickly. Oh, it's an incomplete pass. He was trying to get it to Hilaire. They've had that little quick pass on this drive, but now you have a fourth down coming up. Looks like that was Hershey Williams, I believe, uh, breaking on that ball. My eyes deceived me here. Whew. He thought he had it. Well, <laughs> he thought he had it. So fourth down, and the Bulldogs will go for it. Fourth and six. The football resting on the nine-yard line. They trail 34-21 in the game. Glass looking inside has a man and it's a touchdown for Alabama A&M and it's D Anderson with his third touchdown reception of the ball game. So just like that the Bulldogs show they can turn it on when they need to turn it on. D Anderson what a day he's having. That is money. That is flat out money by, by Glass and Anderson. Uh, Anderson did a great job of getting on the inside, turning, getting blocking real. the defender from, from being able to take that ball and knock it down. And then Glass put it right real, on the money. On a big fourth down. Basically, that was the game to keep you in the game, that play. Fourth and six when they had to deliver. Glass to Anderson is good for a touchdown, but we have a flag down, two flags down on the extra point attempt. And the officials will discuss. And they're going to wave it off because they're picking up the flag. So the extra point is good. And just like that, before you could blink, we have a 34-28 ball game. Connell Maynard's team is on the comeback trail. They put up 14 big points here in the fourth quarter.
That is Grambling coach Broderick Fobbs. You're watching on the sideline, looking calm and cool. His team still out front, 34 to 28, but he may have a dilemma here because they're about to get the football, and he will have to decide, do they continue to be aggressive and continue to press it? Have a young freshman quarterback put your coach hat on. What, what, do, what do you do in this situation? Because you do need to pick up a couple of first downs. Yeah, no, no, you do. And I think you, you, you find a nice little inside screen to Bruton to start off the drive and then see where you go from there. That's, that's a safe pass, but it, but it still moves you forward. Spencer Corey with a little pooch kick up in the air. Fair catch is called for and made. So the Grambling Tigers will take over in good field position. That was Cash Foley making the fair catch there on the uh, kickoff. This is a young quarterback. It's quite a situation for he, He's getting getting his baptism under fire today. And here he is. He's made some big plays in this ball game. Of course, he's one of the big reasons why Grambling is out in front. And now they're going to ask him to do some big things again and pick up a couple of first downs, move the ball a little bit, try to flip the field. And if you can't put points on the board, at least take some time off of the clock. Right. And, and again, it's, it, it, it's an interesting dilemma, but I think you just have, you have to attack grab your best plays and go for it. Noah Bowden fakes the handoff. Bowden fires it down the sideline, and there's a flag for pass interference call. He was trying to hit Kobe Ross. So we'll see what the official has. It's number 24, Caleb Riley, and he's going to be guilty of pass interference, so that will be a first down, and that will help the Grambling situation a lot. Yeah, and he ran him out. He ran him out of bounds, and you can't do that. Never. Well, he did turn around there. That's an interesting call there, actually. I don't know that that would have been a flag I would have thrown because he did turn around. Originally, I didn't think he turned around, but his head came around. Well, I know that guy on the sidelines with the white cap wouldn't have thrown <laughs> it either. I can tell you that right now. So it's a first down for the Grambling Tigers, and the ball goes all the way to midfield. Bowden has gone all Bradley the way to get in the end zone. Hands it to Bruton. Inside, Jarquez with a hole, and he Almost. scampers all the way down deep yeah, near the red zone. Ball. Nice run there. Quick feet. Good vision to find that hole. Yeah, Bruton, that's all Bruton right there. Look at that. Just two, three moves from real, really fast in his cutting ability. Just enough to get that defender to lean the, lean the wrong way. Bradley kind of sets him up. need to get in this end zone. And now you oh, methodically, and the Tigers are being nice and methodical, not in a hurry. Brown here. Brown here. Ball oh, resting at about the 33-yard line. Grambling hadn't gotten a lot of yardage on the ground until that last run, and here goes Bruton again. Into the secondary, takes it down near the 20. Probably knocked down around the 22-yard line. So Bruton making his presence felt late in this ball game when the Tigers needed to pick up some first downs and keep the clock going. Yeah, and you would think the Bulldogs would be ready for, for a lot of this inside trap running here. Uh, but, but the Tigers just doing a great job of the interior alignment of executing that job. And Bruton just turning on the gas. And, and get the Bulldogs, you know he's going to get the call here again. That's what I'm saying. They need to do something. Clock ticking down, 4-10 to go in the ball game. First and 10 for the Grambling Tigers. So they have a jump on defense, so it's a free play for Grambling. Completed pass near the sidelines. Number 18, Troutman makes the stop. Xavier Cooper was the receiver who made the catch. And we'll see if the, if the officials actually called offsides on the play because one of the linemen did go early. Yeah, result of the play, I think I just heard him say, uh, look at Troutman there, trying to just steal the ball, can't get it. So the offsides is declined. The play picks up the first down, so another first down for the Grambling Tigers. That, that may have iced the game right there on that, that particular play. Of course, no, we'll get you know, your first down, you got to do a field goal here, too. <laughs> so. Still 3.45 right, left, still too much time to go. Tigers doing a good job of running down that clock right now. Bowden hands inside to Bruton. And that time, there are a lot of white jerseys around there to make the stop. 
including D uh, Dravion Carter, number 90. Yeah, that's some tackling right there. I mean, that, that, that they were all coming and they got there. Just a good job. And again, Grambling, this has been a great job for the Grambling Tigers because they got the football. A three and out would have been the last thing they would have wanted, but they got the pass interference call, and that kind of got them going. That just kind of started the momentum going their way. So second down with the ball resting just outside of the 10. You can talk about the call, but how about the execution there? You, you allowed your, your young quarterback to even throw that ball. Bowden has pressure, stands in the pocket, had a man wide open, and the pass is behind him. Isaiah Gray was his intended receiver in the end zone, and he shoots that one just, I think the pressure caused him to throw it a little faster than he wanted to. You know, before this drive, we talked about Eric Marty, how would he call this last drive, and he has put his faith in his quarterback and his offense. Again, that's an aggressive play call. And if that was just executed a little bit better on the throw, as you, as you talked about, I mean, that's a touchdown, a big, big play. And we do have, we do have a flag. We have a flag on the field which is for illegal man downfield, but the Bulldogs declined the penalty, so it'll be third down instead of taking the penalty yardage. They were going to try to make a stop here. Yeah, they don't want to give him one extra play. That's, that's time and another play to, to be able to do something with it. So a big play coming up here for the Tigers. Third and 10 for the G-Men. Bowden will try to throw it inside and it's intercepted. Oh, no. What a turning point in this ball game. Oh, it's intercepted no. by the Bulldogs. Number 68 making the play for Alabama A&M. Oh, no. That is Jamal oh, no. Irby. Jamal Irby, the big oh, defensive no. tackle. 6'3", 237, coming up with a big play. Wow, that is absolutely huge. Trying a little bit of a safe pass, but big number 90 gets his paws on the ball, and that allows a deflection there. Well, and some people are wondering why they didn't take that penalty, but that, that's exactly why. They wanted them to use up that down. Wow. And what a play by number 68, Jamal Irby. Yeah, and Drevian Carter with the uh, batted ball for allowing him to be able to get that. He got his hands up, so now we have 228 to go in the ball game as these guys take over on offense. Bulldogs will go into control. Glass under pressure. His pass is tipped in, is intercepted the other way. Get <laughs> unbelievable interception there by 91. Cameron Richardson, he's the guy who scooped up the fumble earlier and ran it back for a touchdown. And that time, he looked like a wide receiver making a huge turnover for the Grambling Tigers. Just like that, the ball goes back to the G-Men. My God, that is a, that's a defensive lineman. It's just dream game right here. You get a fumble return for a touchdown and an interception in the same game. Well, it's the pressure that caused it, the pressure the block up front by 99, Martavius Dotson, but then Richardson. I mean, this guy, that is nice hands for a big lineman. Cameron Richardson. Yeah, and, and Dotson, you're right. Uh, that last little little force he put up, and then he threw that arm up, and, and it looked clear for a moment. By the time that ball was thrown, he was able to bat it up and give his team uh, another, give the ball back. It was absolutely fantastic. That's a pretty good catch Yeah, by a defensive lineman. So first and 10 for the Tigers. Bruton on the carry, spinning his way inside the 10. Nice running, good tough running by Bruton inside. Yeah, now I, I would be shocked now if they, if they go to the air at all on this one. And I think you just give it to Bruton, give it to Bruton, and then uh, you either find yourself in the end zone or you kick the field goal. Well, the clock is your friend at this point in the ball game. So you see Grambling looking to the sidelines for the play. I mean, what a turn of events. I mean, what an outstanding. Is this game exciting or what? How many? We have seven turnovers total, I believe, now. Uh, one for the Tigers and five or six for the six, I think, for, for Alabama A&M. So the handoff goes to Bruton again as the clock ticks down to a minute and 27 seconds to go in the ballgame. 
and the Tigers from Grambling will be in no hurry. This has been a good game. This has been a good-ass game. Love. And that, that just goes to show, I mean, you, you really I'm ready for the fifth you can't team. give teams opportunities. You can't give away possessions. And, and when you do that, no matter who you are, no matter what you are, it's just hard to overcome uh, giving other teams the opportunity with the ball. Well, and Alabama e and did have a shot. They had their shot with about two minutes to go, just under two minutes to go. And then the interception off the tip pass, that is Bruton again. And he's dropped down short of the 10 yard line. And the Tiger Center would have snapped the ball right when uh, the Bulldogs, because they were off sides for a minute, but they allowed them to get back and reset. And so therefore there was no flag. But uh, he looked over there. If he just snapped that ball, they would have got an automatic first down and would have closed out that game uh, right there. And I believe that's the final timeout uh, for the Bulldogs just then with 47 uh, seconds left in this game. Well, it just what a, an outstanding game. We knew it was going to be a good game. For some reason, we talked mm -hmm. about it. Grambling has won the last four games in this series. Uh, Coach Fobbs is making a quarterback change. That's always interesting. He brought in the young freshman, yeah. and he played well. He started slowly. First couple of drives went nowhere, but as this game has continued to go on, he has continued to get better and better as the game has gone on. And again, I, I think, you know, if you're a Tigers fan, I mean, you see a lot of, good things that you saw in this game uh, a defense that's opportunistic that had a lot of pressure a lot of stunts uh, they, they were putting pressure on a really good Alabama A&M team all game long and were consistent uh, throughout four quarters of football I believe and yet an offense that was growing confidence in the young quarterback too so Garrett Urban is on for the 27 yard attempt puts it down and he puts it through a good kick so the Grambling Tigers We'll tack on three more, and their lead goes up to 37-28. The Grambling Tigers in front, 37-28. to 28. Garrett Urban with a couple of field goals today, doing a, playing a really good game and delivering some uh, clutch kicks. He missed one, but he's put in some big ones when they needed it. Yeah, and if you're a, a Bulldog fan, it's just a, the story is just turnovers. I mean, it's the, the, you have a quarterback that's... Uh, Four interceptions, right? Uh, three, I think three interceptions and a fumble, if I'm not mistaken, so four turnovers by him. Well, the fourth uh, one was the big fella inside, I think. So that was, I don't think that was number Four one. interceptions and yeah. a fumble? Yeah. <laughs> so that's not, not his best day at all. And then you had a special teams fumble as well. So that, that's a that's a huge day. Six, seven turnovers in the game, six by Alabama. I've seen it coming, though. I've seen uh, these boys just, come again as upset. I said it on the last stream. Have respect for that football. Okay, I, you can't um, afford to give it up. Okay, I give that guy a lot of credit there. Straight. Broderick Fobbs got his team ready to play. They knew they were going to have yeah, an uphill man. battle. They were taking on the defending Grand champions from the spring, the Bulldogs from Alabama A&M, a no team that came in here averaging almost 40 points a ball game. So, and the defense has definitely been up to the challenge. No, no, no question about it. And again, good fans out here as well today. Uh, they, they had a pretty good turnout for, for this game. So the Bulldogs will have it for 43.1. We'll see if they can't make something happen here. Some magic. <laughs> and on that, <laughs> that sideline, Connell Maynard is never going to uh, said, okay, we're done. They're always going to keep fighting and fighting. So they're going to keep punching in there again. Yeah, there's no quit. There's no quit in them. So you're going you're to have to have uh, one of those playmakers just make some, something absolutely electric. Glass, this has not been his best day. As he comes out for the final 43.1 seconds to go in this ball game, he'll operate with an empty backfield. Three wide outs to his right. He looks in that direction. Comes back over the middle. Tries to get Hilaire where he could break something, but it's not going to happen there. Good defense by the Grambling Tigers. They were not fooled one bit. Yeah, you know, when you're playing defense this part of the game, you've got to keep people in front of you. And you got to make sure you just, you're just you a sure tackler. You're not trying to knock anyone's head off. You're just trying to stay on them. So Glass has it on second down, throws over the middle, first down. That should stop the clock. 
It did not, so he must have not picked up the first down. It looked like he was past the sticks. Now they moved the sticks. But the clock, the clock continued though. to roll. That was interesting. They rolled off an extra, I'd say, five seconds almost. Uh, a little bit more than that, actually. You're right. Uh, I think that's why they just stopped the clock and they're letting them snap. Still move the clock up. Again. Yeah. 12 seconds they're going to put back on the clock here. We were watching it, but someone else didn't see it. <laughs> the home clock. <laughs> it's the home team's clock. Pro Football Hall of Fame Day at Grambling today, and they will have a lot to celebrate as Glass fires near the sideline, has Anderson, and he tiptoes down the sidelines. That's down with one second to go in the ball game as D. Anderson goes out of bounds. He's had a big day for the Bulldogs, but it won't be enough. Three touchdown catches. Mm -hmm. So he's been huge. But there's just been a lot of young men stepping up for the Grambling Tigers today, including their quarterback, Noah Bowden. Yeah, they, they, the Tigers have a lot to be proud of in this game. And again, you, you were underdog coming in. Everyone was talking about the Bulldogs and, and what they could do and how it was going to be an uphill battle for you to be able to even play with them. And, and you just go out there and they played their tails off and uh, come away with a big win here. Incomplete is the final pass as it goes into the end zone. Glass had a couple of receivers there, but it's batted down. That is the end of the ball game. Jorge, give me some of your final thoughts on this one because Coach Fobbs is going to be so proud of his team. They came in here and they beat a very, very good team from Alabama A&M, as you see the two coaches. A lot of respect there. You can tell. I mean, that, that's just that's great good respect game, by both coaching man. staff. They know good what kind of hard game. battle this Appreciate was. And, and I love to see that when you, when you see two, two coaches right here really, really genuinely say, hey, look, you know, a fantastic battle. Uh, uh, great job here. But, but what I came away with here is, is a Tigers team that found a way. They found got a way. They upset. were supposed to be out, man. I got new uh, day Coach put a lot of faith in the young Noah Bowden that uh, he gave the opportunity uh, early. They tried to be a little bit safe with him. Wait uh, next the week. defense came through with enough big Jackson plays State to slowly boys. get them in the game. And then you had a young man uh, growing up. Uh, uh, throughout this game, and then you had the defense yeah. just play their tails off, and, and and just a huge win for them. I'll tell you what else they found. They found a quarterback yes, for the is. future. Coach Broderick do. Bobs may have found his quarterback for a couple of years to come now. So for Jorge Vargas, our producer Brian Duvall, and our entire crew, I'm Butch Alcindor saying so long from Grambling, where the final score is 37-28 Grambling. All games airing on the ESPN networks are streaming live and archived on the ESPN. Yeah, man, y'all, everybody stay blessed, stay safe out here in these streets, stay sucker free. You know, we're going to come back next week for something for y'all. And a lot of y'all be talking some, y'all be having some, uh, some good things going on in that chat, too. I'm going to have to bring some of y'all on the show, let y'all get y'all debate on for y'all don't have to type each other to death. Because <laughs> y'all be in that chat going crazy on each other, man. But we checking out. Peace, bless.